Okay, I'm back inside the aft cabin of the boat. I'm underneath the cockpit. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boat Works. Let's get to work. If you're new to the channel, I want to welcome you. And if you're one of our returning subscribers, welcome back to the works. For those of you who are not familiar with what's going on inside the boat works, give me a second to explain. The boat behind me is a 1986 Alban 27 family cruiser. It's a small trawler. We call it a pocket trawler because it fits on a triple axle trailer. It can be towed and launched by the do-it-yourself owner. I have been working on this boat for the past eight years. Things are beginning to pick up pace since I newly retired and I've got the boat shop built. I do a variety of projects inside the boat shop. I film them and I put them on YouTube to help other do-it-yourself boat builders and amateur boat restorers. Frequently, I talk about projects where I'm adding components to the interior of the boat, cabinets and different sorts of furniture, things that will eventually be used for storage long term when I use the boat for cruising. Today, we're going to talk about one of the techniques that I use to install cabinets inside a fiberglass boat. This episode, we're going to talk about cheater blocks. So what's a cheater block? Huh? This is a cheater block. It is a piece of three quarter inch Kusa board. And on one side of it, I've gone ahead and put a layer of seven ounce fiberglass cloth and it's epoxied on there. And what that does is it gives something for the screws to, to screw into. So the threads don't strip out in the Kusa board foam. Uh, Kusa board's pretty dense, but sometimes if screws go in and out a lot, it, it will kind of tear down the foam. So you need something hard that the, that the threads can grab onto. And that's why we put a layer of fiberglass on the outside of the Kusa board. And then the block gets epoxy to the hull. The question is, is why do I call them cheater blocks? Well, back when I was installing the bulkheads for the head in my Alban 27, pocket trawler, I had to have a way to hold the Kusa board bulkhead in place while some fiberglass epoxy set up inside the joints. Normally you would do this by having some type of clamp to hold two things together, or you would stand there yourself and just hold it until the epoxy sets up. But because the epoxy takes overnight to cure, I decided there has to be a better way and I came up with the idea of attaching small blocks to the hull of the boat and then I could screw the Kusa board against those blocks holding it in place while the epoxy in the joints set up overnight. Basically it was a way to cheat. Instead of standing there holding it, well the block would do all the work for me. In the case of installing the bulkheads in the Alban 27, it was very easy to attach the blocks to the hull. The hull is a half inch thick or more due to the coring in the top deck of the boat. I could just very gently screw in the blocks, keep them in place, while I then affix the bulkhead to them and let the epoxy set up. But when you're dealing with other areas of the boat where the hull does not have coring and it's not that thick, well, you've got a problem. The Alban 27 hull is approximately 10 millimeters thick. That's about three eighths of an inch. Now it's solid fiberglass. There's nothing to screw the blocks into when your hull is only three eighths of an inch thick. This cheater block technique was further developed when I started working on what would become one of my favorite projects, the 1983 Compact Pilot House Sailboat. I added a custom pilot house to this small 16 foot sailboat. And in the process of mocking up the Kusa board and building the pilot house, I needed a way to hold the Kusa board panels in place and in fact develop kind of a camber and a curve that followed the lines of the boat. Kusa board 
in half inch dimension can be bent very gently as long as you have something to kind of press it against a form that you can push it against by screwing pieces of kusa board into the top deck of the sailboat i was able to then bend the panels around the kusa board giving it a nice curve you glue the pilot house together in the joints using epoxy and fiberglass and then afterwards you simply remove the cheater blocks get them out of the way but the shape of the pilot house is already in place due to the epoxy in the joints as i started adding different pieces of furniture to the interior of the Alban 27, I realized that I had to come up with a way to a attach these fixtures to the boat, but they also needed to be removable over time. Now, in a wooden boat, cabinets are essentially screwed into wood, which is attached to the wooden hull of the boat. In steel boats, your cabinets may be attached to metal flanges or to studs that are actually attached to the stringers and stuff inside the boat. But in a fiberglass boat that has no stringers and no ribs, there has to be a way to attach these items to the bare hull. Remember the analogy that these boats are constructed almost like two cups. There's a hull and then a top deck and pan liner that is placed inside the hull. And when the two pieces are joined, like two cups stacked on top of each other, well, the whole structure kind of gains some rigidity and becomes much stronger than it would be if it was just a plastic cup by itself. All this means that there's nothing in the hull to actually attach to. You have to start with something. So this is what gave me the idea of using my cheater block technique to essentially create mounting points for cabinets and stuff that I would add to the Alban 27. Instead of screwing the cheater blocks into the top deck of the boat like I did for the bulkheads or for the sailboat, I would actually take the pieces of kusa board and I would epoxy them to the hull. If kusa board is properly epoxied against fiberglass, the joint will become stronger than the surrounding material. It makes sense to make your cheater blocks out of your leftover scraps of kusa board. If you're enjoying this episode, would you do me a favor? Hit the like button and maybe leave a comment below. I invite you to subscribe. And if you really want to help out the channel, well, please consider leaving a donation on Patreon. This channel would not be possible without your support. Now, I want to remind you that the cheater block technique is not for structural components on a boat. The cheater block technique is a poor man's way to retrofit fiberglass components back into a fiberglass hull when the hull is not thick enough to do any sort of mechanical attachment. In the case of load-bearing bulkheads, structural bulkheads, steps, things like that, those need to be permanently mounted to the hull of the boat, and cheater blocks is not the way to do that. Okay, I'm back inside the aft cabin of the boat. I'm underneath the cockpit sole, and I'm, I'm gonna do the last project for the aft cabin here. When I built the bulkheads for the aft cabin and the aft cabin cowling, I talked about putting in some, and I never did it before, so now I'm, it's something I've gotta get done. So I've crawled back up underneath here, and we're gonna lay in the cheater blocks and uh, get them all pre-positioned. You have to have the bulkheads in place in order to mark where the cheater blocks are gonna go. And then you have to remove the bulkheads and install the cheater blocks on their own. And what I do is I take the kusa block and I epoxy it to the hull so that like the bulkhead, when it goes up against it, it has something to screw into. The cheater block is what it can screw into behind it. 
And uh, this is a system that I came up with in order to be able to remove bulkheads and pieces of furniture and stuff like that. It works quite well. Uh, you, you, you put your cheater blocks in and then you have something to screw into. You can use finished stainless steel wa uh, screws with washers. It looks real nice. But before you epoxy the cheater block in place, you have to sand the surface that it's going to be epoxy to because, of course, the boat has been painted and everything. So I sanded it a little bit to get it down to bare fiberglass, bare gel coat, coat, and give it some teeth so that the epoxy has something to grab onto. In some cases, I have to screw the cheater block in place first with the epoxy and then remove the screws after the fact. But in other cases, I'm able to just use thickened epoxy, peanut butter style, put it on here, boom, put it right in place. It'll be good to go. This one here, I sanded down already. So I just be able to put this right in like that. Boom. Now the lines, and I, there's lines here. I put these lines in so I would know where the bulkhead ends. If the bulkhead ends right here, cheater blocks on the other side, you'd be able to screw right into it. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Something just like this. So this is West Systems Epoxy mixed with 205 hardener, the fast hardener. And then it's also got some coital silica mixed in and uh, creates kind of like a peanut butter consistency. And this is what we use to put in the cheater blocks. The blue tape is there so that you can know where the cheater block is located. Once you put the bulkhead back in place, the cheater block will be hidden. So you need to have the blue tape there to mark where the cheater block is so you know where to screw into. So here we are. This is what a finished cheater block looks like. It's permanently installed in there. We've got the blue tape marking where it's at. This right here is a cheater block for the top of the aft cabin cowling right here. It's gonna screw right into here on the side. When I refer to a finish washer, this is what I'm talking about here. You got a basically got a, a flathead screw and it goes into this type of raised washer here. Sometimes I like to just use the flathead like this and I'll countersink them and uh, that, and then cover it up with trim, which is what I may do in this case here. but. This is an example of what this, these things look like. This is going to be the last step to putting in the cheater blocks in the aft cabin. All I've got to do now is drill some pilot holes for the small finishing screws that will hold the bulkhead in place. And so far it's working great. I'm using stainless steel number six one inch screws. They're nice, they're kind of small, and they will be able to be hidden real easily by putting in some trim around the edge of the bulkhead. There's not much to show for this project, but finally everything is nice and tight. The cheater blocks worked out great. We'll call this project done. Well, there you go. We're making some slow progress on my Alban 27 family cruiser. And very soon we'll be completing phase one, the dirty work on the boat and moving on to phase two, installing all of the systems inside my pocket trawler. If you're interested in contacting me or following me as the, I do work inside the shop, be sure to check out our Facebook page. We're on Instagram now. And of course, we're on Gmail and Patreon. Thanks for stopping by. I hope to see you next time in the works. Stay motivated. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.